Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome on everyone. The other day I was opening some letters and making a right mess of them and I thought, right, what I really need is a letter opener. And I could have quite easily gone to the drawer, which I was standing right next to, but I just thought a knife is for other things, not certainly for opening letters. I went on the Procraft website, the one in the UK, and they do some fantastic kits on there. And they've got one type of letter opener on there, which was in three different types of uh, finish. There was a gunmetal, uh, a gold, and it might have been a chrome as well. And they're all very, very reasonably priced, just over five pounds. I bought myself a couple. I've got the gold kit there. That's what it is. And I also bought the gunmetal, which is usually my favorite choice. And this is what I've come up with. I've got to say, I'm really, really pleased with this. These basically, the blanks are just an ordinary like seven mil pen blank inside. So you can see the length there. And when I do on that, I thought that the, the handle was just gonna be a little bit short. As you can see, you can probably just about get three fingers on the actual handle, which because you've got this end piece as well, isn't quite so bad because you, your four finger sort of wraps around there. But I thought, I tr also try and do a version which is slightly longer. Preparation for these is exactly the same as doing a pen blank. So you can turn them on a pen mandrel if you've got one. If you've got bushings for a 7mm pen kit which goes between centres, you can turn it that way as well. What I did, I also produced this longer blank. And as you can see, it's quite a bit longer than the standard one in there. And you can certainly get all four fingers around there. The way I've done this is I've actually just cut the brass tube in half. I've still drilled a hole all the way through the blank as if it's an ordinary pen blank, but what I've done is I've just glued the ends of the brass tube in at each end. The only reason you've, you've got the brass tube in here is one, obviously for if you've got it on a mandrel or turn it between centers to actually locate the blank to stay central. Then you can actually just take your blank down to the size of the bushings on the end. The only other reason in there for the actual brass tube is to push in these fittings on the end. So all the space that's in the middle there is just wasted space. It's just not used for anything. So it doesn't make a difference. You could make your blank as long as you like. So while I'm just gonna talk about this, I will just show some videos of the full process of what I've done with this one. So it's just like any other pen blank. You've got your seven mil bushings on the end. And because this is such a small piece of wood like that, I find it quicker and easier to use the skew just to true this up and then take it down to the size that you want. The turning is such a small process of this actual producing the finished item. The real time is spent on, you do a bit of sanding. I've gone through the grits from 180 through to 600. I've then given this, I think it's about four or five coats of sanding so that I really wanted to get that penetrated into the wood so that it gives me a nice surface to finish with. For finish wise, I've actually gone for the melamine lacquer. A lot of pen turners, me included, when we first start out, all use a CA finish, which is brilliant. It gives you a nice hard wearing finish. It can be a bit of a pain to put on, uh, especially to try and get an even surface. You're sanding back a lot, um, but the final result comes up with a really, really nice glossy finish when you buff it up. The only thing I find with a CA finish, it gives more of a plasticky finish on it, which is not always very favorable, especially when you're gonna try and show off a piece of wood. What I've tended to do now is I've moved across to the melamine lacquer. Melamine lacquer is a very, very sort of similar finish. It takes a lot of work, like a CA finish, building up your layers, and then finally buffing it all off. To finish it off, I've seen some people use an abrasive paste like Yorkshire grit and then put a wax finish over the top. I actually then just finished it off with tea cut. Tea cut, if you're not in the UK, is basically a very, very fine abrasive that you usually use on car paints. So if you've got minor scratches on your car, you'll usually rub that all over your car scratches and it will take out the scratches and then buff up the paint to give it a nice finish, a nice finish on there. So that does work really, really well, certainly with things like CA finishes as well. Melamine lacquer is supposed to fully harden over the course of a few days, so it does build up a lot, a little bit, a lot better finish over time and becomes a lot more harder wearing. This particular one, it's it's got a slight gloss to it, not a high gloss or anything. I put several coats of melamine lacquer on this, but I've been very very thin. What I'm going to probably try and do with this larger blank is I'm going to start off initially with thinner coats, but then build up thicker coats and just see if I can come up with a different type of finish. Again, I may well finish it off with the T-cut or I might well use something like Yorkshire grit. 
So the next job I'm going to mount this larger blank on my pen mandrel, get it turned down with a skew to the finished size and run through the same sort of process. I've got my blank now mounted on the mandrel and as you can see it just looks like any ordinary pen blank and I'm going to use the one inch skew just to true this up first of all and then just take it down to a very very similar shape down to the bushings on each end and probably a slight uh, raise in the middle so it's just a bit more natural to hold. Uh, for lathe speed I'm only turning this about 1500 rpm I just don't see any point of turning it up any further. That's all the turning done. You can see very, very quick and easy done. I will now go and sand this through the grits from 180 through to 600. And at the end of each grit, it's just important to sand it along the grain. Uh, that just helps take out any additional scratch marks that the sandpaper has caused. Uh, this has now been sanded through the grits right the way up to 600 and I don't know how well it shows on the camera there but where you get these uh, much lighter patches in the grain that's from where there's dust from the sanding actually stuck in the grain so that you can imagine that they're all little holes actually in the surface of the wood and even you can blow them out so that's blown literally all of those out just using an airline now the problem is is that if I just put a finish over this to start with it's going to go up into all those holes to start with and it means you've got to put more and more finish on. So this is where I use a sanding sealer. A lot of people use a sanding sealer, um, some people prefer not to. All the sanding sealer is going to do is actually going to seal all that wood up so that it's got a much sort of like harder surface to actually put the finish on. Then it saves you having to use so much finish. So I'm initially going to probably put a couple of coats on this. I might build it up a little bit more. Uh, as you'll see, sanding sealer is so quick and easy to put on. Just need a little bit on the cloth and it brings out the, the grain of the wood so much nicer. and this will dry fairly quickly so I'll leave that probably just two or three minutes uh, put another coat on it's not really raising the grain uh, often like you find with a lot of wood that it will raise the grain and you have to resand it again afterwards this has now had about three or four coats of sanding sealer knocked it back with the 600 grit paper give it another couple of coats and it's come up really really nice applying something like sanding sealer which is putting moisture back in the wood raises the grain which is why you need to knock it back but once you've sanded it back often or not when you put more moisture on again because the grain has already risen it won't rise again so that's why i haven't sanded it again after the last lots of coats of sanding sealer finish wise i'm going to use the melamine lacquer from chestnut products there's various ways you can put this on. You can put it on by cloth, by brush. Uh, I think you can even airbrush this as well. I'm going to use this time a similar sort of thing as if you was putting a CA finish on. So I'll have the lathe on a really, really slow speed and just run the cloth over. I want to build up a few layers. I don't mind if it's not fully even to start with because you can sand this back very much like with CA glue. You'll find that it fully hardens it's, uh, it takes up to about seven days before you get the full strength of this but in that meantime you can still work on it because it does dry off very quickly so i've just got my lathe set to a really really slow speed at the minute which is only about 150 which might be too slow but we'll see so i'm just going to apply this on just to get a coat on there and I don't know how well it shows up on the camera there but it's already given it a very slight sort of gloss to it 
it will dry off. It takes, only takes probably about two or three minutes where we're going on so thin, so I can keep building it up. It's not like with a CA, but then we've got to hit it with an activator or wait several minutes. Uh, I mean, that is already dry. Let's say within about 20, 30 seconds. So this will slowly bung up as well. So the more you use the same cloth, you'll have to keep changing it. So I'll just put the lathe on again. This time I'll start from the other end. Just go backwards and forwards so that it smooths it out. I'll just carry on now, just building up coats like that. This has now had quite a few coats of the Melamine lacquer. And I don't know how well it shows on the camera there, but it's got a, a bit of a gloss to it now. Uh, more so sort of right on the very ends where it's got a lot thicker. So what I'm going to do as well is that if you looked at this closely, you can actually see some little sort of like lines in there. And that's basically because where it's been applied by the paper towel, it creates little ridges as you put it on. So the first thing I'm going to do is just knock this back with an eye web. Um, that will take sort of like the very, very top surface off. And that, by the looks of it, at the same time as well, has got literally rid of all those ridge marks. There are some very, very fine ones in there. But what I'm going to do is I've decided what I'm going to probably give this sort of more of a like a waxy type finish whether it be on the buffing wheel or something similar like that um, but I want to just polish this up first of all so I'm going to use an abrasive paste on this now you can use something like Yorkshire grit the uh, standard and then the microfine this time I'm actually going to go for the cut and polish from chestnut uh, don't use this very much but it's very very similar and it works the same with literally all the abrasive pastes just rub it in uh, it shouldn't really be anything in the grain to go into because the melamine lacquer should have filled all the grain up and then just treat this the same as if you're going to be using a bit of sandpaper start off at a fairly low speed and when it first goes on you can feel the grit within the paste and as that grit breaks down you can then slowly speed up the lathe so that's totally all broken down now and I can just literally buff that off There is no marks in there at all now. Uh, I could leave it as it is, uh, or alternatively I could put some form of wax or something on there. I'm going to try some Canuba wax. I bought this literally when I first started turning, so this bar here is a good five years old. I mean, I've also got a couple of small beeswax ones there to show how much they get used. Uh, but the Canuba wax is supposed to be a lot harder wearing than the beeswax. So I'm going to put that on and then just see what this comes up like. So that's come up so so nicely. And you get bits of the microcrystalline wax, a bit like you do when you do CA, just gather on the ends, which just pull away from now. Okay. The actual kits come in two parts like this, but they're both then in two more parts. So you just unscrew the end cap off of that one and the actual blade off of this piece. They're two totally different threads, so you need to make sure that you put these in whichever end you need them to be. But if you've got a fairly sort of uh, turn piece like I've got here, where it probably really doesn't matter which way I go in, then I can just put it in either end. And just like with the pen kits, easy enough to do on the lathe. 
just make sure you've got everything square other end pushed in and then depending on the size of these it goes in that end and the blade goes in that end So that's the one with the much bigger handle, which I really, really like. So compared to the other one, that's the two designs I've come up with. So that's the one with the standard size handle and that's in the gunmetal version. And hopefully you can just see it's a lot, lot bigger handle, uh, something a lot more natural to hold. The other thing to mention on these as well is that the gold kits on these is I believe gold plated so they're not gold coloured. Now you can buy cheaper versions which tend to be gold colours and they will wear a lot lot quicker. Hopefully that's given you an idea of something totally different. Uh, certainly that you don't always need to settle with the size of the tube that you've got. Thanks a lot for watching.